us to read the book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Daniel 11 verse 32. Can we read together? And I want us to concentrate on part B. Let's go one, two. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. Now the next part I want us to read with understanding. Let's go. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Can we read that portion again? But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Bonus if you will. Able to turn to your neighbor and tell them the name of your God. Mungu wako anaitu anani. Hallelujah. Please do not allow yourself to be quiet. What is the name of your God? Do you know their names? Do you know what they are called? One has a few. Amen. Now, the Bible says that those who know their God shall be strong, and not only strong, but they will be able to do exploits. They'll be able to do exploits. And uh, our topic today is the same. Those who know their God shall do exploits. Hallelujah. In this dispensation that we are in, it is so prudent that we get to know our God. Not we get to hear about him. Not we get to read about him. But that we get to know him. Because there's a difference between reading about God or hearing about God and knowing who God is. Hallelujah. Most of us here have heard about the former president of the U.S., Barack Obama. We have read about his history, but how many of us know him? We normally say he's our brother. Our brother is the president when he was the president. He's the president of the United States. But seriously, do we know him? We don't know him. We've only read about him. We've seen him on telly. Yeah, as he could address meetings here and there. We have heard about the things that he achieved. But the truth of the matter is that we don't know him. And at times, we can fall into the danger of knowing about God as opposed to knowing God, knowing who God is. Now, the word to know, as it is used here, is first and foremost derived from the book of Genesis, where the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife. Now, that means it's a knowledge of intimacy. That's the first time that that word was being used in the book of Genesis. And it's a word of intimacy. And so we would say that the word know, as it is used in Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, is the same word that was used when the, the Bible says that Adam knew his wife. It's a knowledge that is beyond just talking in the public place. It's a knowledge that is beyond interacting in the public space. It's a deeper knowledge. It's a, a, a knowledge of intimacy. It's a knowledge where actually it would refer to like um, an equivalent of the knowledge between a husband and a wife. Boneswa Sifiwe. Hallelujah. And a, a knowledge of intimacy. It's a knowledge that definitely goes beyond the public spaces. Hallelujah. It is beyond the public space. Today, as we gather in this place, it is a public space. But when we get into the time of worship, within your public space where you're standing, you can make it an intimate space and lock yourself in the presence of God and not care about a neighbor when you lock yourself in the place of intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a knowledge that actually talks about 
intimacy, it's a knowledge that can only happen in the secret place. And no wonder the Bible says that them who know the Lord, they are God, shall be strong and they shall do exploits. The current dispensation that we are living in, we must go beyond just saying, I am born again, to a point of saying, I know my God. Paul at one point came, uh, he came to a point where he was saying, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him until that day. It was a deeper level of knowledge. The same Paul at a particular time after having served, he has gone for missionary journeys and everything. He comes to the book of Philippians chapter, chapter 3 verse 10 and he says that I may know him and the power that raised him from the dead. Now that is the knowledge that I'm talking about. He had been serving God all um, throughout since the time when he met the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. But he gets to a point when he realizes there's something about this God that I have not yet known. And so he says publicly in the book of Philippians as he writes to the Philippians that I may know him. And not just know him, but be able to experience the power that raised him from the dead. And going further, he says, and to also fellowship in his sufferings, being conformed to his death. Hallelujah. They who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. It is a knowledge that causes us as Christians to be able to conceive in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. You cannot say that when you see a husband and a wife walking in the streets of Nairobi, you see them walking in the streets of Zimmerman, that that can bring conception. It's only in the olden days when our parents would never want us to walk with young men. pregnant I don't know about you people, but that, those were my parents. But I want to tell you here that for that conception to take place, it means you have to go into an inner chamber somewhere for that conception to take place. And so when we are saying those that know their Lord, for you to be able to conceive in the spiritual realm, it means you will go beyond just being in the public to a place of intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ that he can be able to tell you things that you wouldn't be able to hear when you are in the crowd with the noise of the crowd. And no wonder the Bible talks of Moses. There are many times when Moses would leave the Israelites at the foot of the mountain and he'd go up the mountain. Why? Because he needed to spend some intimate time with God. And as he went up the mountain, he would be in a period of fasting. And it's on top of that mountain that God was able to release to him the Ten Commandments, to release to him the instructions on how he was meant to lead the Israelites. And so for you and I to know the Lord God, it means we have to move from the public spaces of saying, I love the Lord, to a place where you have uh, set apart that you are going to be with him alone. And no wonder a singer sang and said, I'll put you in front of my melody. I'll put you in front of my work. I'll put you in front of my family. I'll put you in front of everything thing and I'm willing to make room for two. You and I Jesus. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say because that is all that matters. Because when I put you in front and when I make room or rather when you make room for the two of you in that secret place, that is the place where you're going to get ideas on how to uh, lead your family. Ideas that will be able to prosper you. Ideas that will enable you to walk the walk of faith without stumbling. Them who know their God shall be strong. And they shall do exploit. God desires that we spend time with him alone. To the 
extent that we can be able to conceive in the spiritual realm. We have been talking of a revival, end time revival. Saints, let me bring it to you today. That that revival has to begin with me. That revival has to begin with you. It will not come with the guests that we are getting to visit our countries. They are good. They are coming to teach us the word of God. We love them. But a revival must begin with you and with me. One as if you will. It will mean that I go out of my comfort zone and be willing to spend time in the presence of God. Time in the word of God. Time in prayer. Time in worship. For me to be able to know God because only then will I be able to know what God is capable of doing. Hallelujah. Only then will things, when things come and they are hitting hard on me, I'll still be able to say like Job, that though you slay me, yet will I trust. Only then. Only then will we know that though the economy is difficult, yet I have a God who is able to carry me through. I will not compromise in whatever way whatsoever. When we know the Lord God whom we have believed in. And no wonder Moses, when he went and he saw the burning bush and he moves nearer to the burning bush and then the Lord tells him, remove your shoes. And the Lord is telling him, I want you to go to, the, to Egypt and rescue my children, the Israelites. The first thing that he is asking, who will I say has sent me? In other words, he was not willing to go and speak about someone he met in a burning bush, a strange phenomena. He was willing to go all the way. First and foremost, get to know him in intimacy. Get to know who exactly he is before he could go to the Israelites and tell them, the, uh, the God of our fathers has sent me. It was not enough. For God to introduce himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so he's asking, fine, you are sending me, you are saying, you're the God of our forefathers. But I want you to tell me today, what is your name? What is your name? I don't know how many of us are seated here today who have ever dared God and ask him, Father, what is your name? Unaitu anani. Yes, I know. I invited you, Jesus Christ, in my, in my life. But who exactly are you? Getting to a place of knowledge. You know the Lord God. And until we are willing to spend time with God, we will not be able to do exploits. We've been wondering. I don't know how many of you have been wondering. I have been wondering. When you read the book of Acts, it's full of actions. That the Lord God did using the, 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 the apostles. They believed in this same Lord God that we believe in. But scripture says that as Peter would be walking, that is in the book of Acts chapter 5. Peter would be walking and his shadow would heal the sick. What changed? Isn't he the same God yesterday, today and forever? How come that now in our homes... You will get people who are having headache and that headache will wait until Sunday when the ministry team is standing here. Yet we say we believe. Do we know our God? How come when demons manifest in a place, the first thing that we do is to take off? Do we know the power of our God? How come when the doctors give us a report, we leave the doctor's office when we are downcast? Do we know that he is a healer? How come when there is no money in your pocket, you start crying and wondering the food that we are going to eat? Do we know that he is Jireh? Do we know him? Those who know they are God, shall be strong and do exploit. Jesus spent time with the Father. Bible always says in the fourth watch of the night, he would wake up 
and he would be in prayer till morning. And then during the day, he is walking, coming from the place of prayer. He meets people who were unwell. He meets people who were demon-possessed. And he never had a chance to negotiate with those demons. They would start screaming at a distance when they saw him afar off. They'd be like, do not torment us. Why? Because he knew how to conceive in the spiritual realm in the area of prayer. He would deal with issues in the spiritual realm first before dealing with them in the physical realm. Do we know our God? If Jesus was the son of God, yet he would spend time in the presence of God so that God would give him power because he did exploits. How much more you and I? Hey, brother, my sisters, there are exploits that will not just be done because we are saying praise the Lord. There are exploits that are availed to us, but they will not just be done because you stand and you say you're born again. You must arise and be willing to go an extra mile of making room for the two of you. Until I get to a point of making room for Jesus and I, spend time with him, hear him, learn from him, that is the only time that we'll be able to do certain exploits. Hallelujah. It is possible to memorize the whole Bible, yet not know God. Can I tell us that? It is very possible to memorize memory verse John 3.16 like our Sunday school kids do yet not know this Lord God that we are talking about. It is very possible. When you spend time with the Lord he bathes you in the spirit and you begin having his DNA. Because each and every one of us seated here have the DNA of our parents. Am I right? Yeah, the DNA. I cannot, right now as I'm seated here, I could be a, a real great friend to my sister Helen. But I don't bear the same DNA as her. Because our biological parents were different. When you spend time in the presence of God, he rubs on you. He pours himself on you until you are full of him. Such that when a DNA, spiritual DNA is being done, then we will find the DNA of the Lord God inside of you. Hallelujah. The experience we need to have with God is deeper than just saying, I am born again. It comes from a point of knowing him. It's an experience that comes only when we are in pursuit of God. It comes from us being in an intimate relationship with God. It's an experience that reveals the nature of God in our lives. And no wonder the Bible says in uh, the book of Jeremiah, if we can have it, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Jeremiah 29 verse 13, the Bible says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I love the second portion of that. It is okay. Most of us will seek him. And we leave it at that. But you must be willing to seek him with all of our hearts. As in now we are desperate. It's either God you reveal yourself to me or I am done. I do not have an option B. It's either God in this particular situation you reveal yourself. And so I will stay at the place of prayer until I get an instruction from the Lord God. It means I am seeking with the whole of my heart. Hallelujah. Seeking with the Lord, whole of our hearts. That is when we will be able to have a deeper experience with him. That is the only time that we will be able to hear his voice when he speaks to us. Hallelujah. Because we will have spent time with him. We know when he is speaking. We will not be saying something spoke to me. I had something say. It is not something. When you have spent time with him, you know his voice. Today as I'm standing here, 
if my husband would walk and start talking outside here nyinyi hamtajua ni nani huyu ameongea mimi nitajua bwana yesu asifiwe because i've spent time with him actually to an extent that even his footsteps i know them bwana asifiwe i know them but you you won't know because you've not spent time with him those who know their god shall be strong and do exploits i want us to look at a few examples a young man is sent from the field all he is used to doing is taking care of sheep his father's few sheep as the brothers said his name is david he is young he's about 17 16 17 years And the father tells him go out and check on your siblings your brothers are in the battlefield and as he arrives there my imagination even before he could give them the food that he had been sent to give the supplies that he had been sent to give them he suddenly sees this giant of a man and the giant appears in the vicinity at a distance and the entire army of Israel where his brothers belonged are all scampering for safety and the young man looks at the man and wonders all these men who are in this army why are they going into hiding and this man the philistine his name is goliath for 40 years all he i mean 40 days all that he has been doing is he has been presenting himself and challenging the israelite army by telling them front a man give me one man whom we can challenge each other with and all that these men were doing was scampering for safety nobody was willing to present themselves or to be volunteered bona sifiwe And many times I look at them because men are not known to be people who go scampering for safety. Men we look at them as our security, don't we? Yes, when you have your husband, ukisikia kitu kwa mlango, hukimbii huko, and if he would be the one that is running for safety and leaving you there, then you are in trouble, my sister. Bwana asifiwe. You are in great trouble. I remember I had an uncle a few years ago. Where to where I come from there is um, a tendency of some people liking to run in the night <laughs> there's that tendency so my uncle he is already he was already married and there's a way the homestead is normally where the the main house is somewhere and then the sands round like this based on your your the position you are in the family and he was the firstborn the firstborn son He's in his house and there is this guy who has a tendency of running so he has come running at around 3 a.m. in the morning and you know as he's running they don't just run they run while they are kicking doors and if your house has uh, iron sheets wanakuja wanagwara na kikitu you know just causing a lot of discomfort and the thing that this uncle of mine would do akasikia huyo anakimbia anakimbia anafanya hizo ma vitu zake and then what he did he cried from inside his house and he said mami kuja <laughs> bwana asifiwe so the mother from the distance house came out with a rungu to come and rescue a son who is already what married now the israelites were behaving in a similar manner And you know many times I like saying this one thing that if you find a man who is scampering for safety instead of taking care of you he is only a male because man manhood is not defined by trousers Uh oh Bwana asifiwe It is by the ability to be able to front yourself and defend your family, defend what is yours. That is what manhood is all about. That's why when you get into the armed forces, we have fewer ladies. I mean, fewer ladies than men. Because they are a symbol of security. 
And so this man, every time, would present himself as like, Be, give me a man. And this particular day, David has appeared in the battlefront, and the man is like, give me a man. And David is standing with his supplies. He's a small boy. All he knows how to take off for care of are the sheep. And he sees, by the time this man has finished speaking, he looks around to look for the brothers and there is nobody. Everyone has gotten into the caves. And he walks with his supplies, goes into the caves and is asking the brothers, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What will be done for the man who challenges him? Now that's a boy asking. But you know what? Because of having spent time in the wilderness while taking care of sheep with the Lord God of Israel, he had already been um, mentored by the Spirit of God. He had already grown into a man. Actually, he was more a man than the ones who were in the battlefront. Hallelujah. Why? Because manhood, as we are talking here today, and I want us now to talk as in, in form of uh, all of us, women and men, the, the ability to be able to fight the Lord's battle is what maturity is all about. Hallelujah. David knew the Lord. And so he gives the supplies, and after giving the supplies, he goes on pursuing until he's taken to the king. And he's like, I'm willing to challenge this man. The man is way built, way older. He has been in battle longer. David has not been in battle physically, but he has been in battle spiritually. Hallelujah. He knew the Lord God. He knew what God was capable of doing. And so this was an exploit that he was willing to do. And as he stands before Saul, Saul is asking him, how sure are you that you're going to conquer this man? And David says, well, I was taking care of my father's sheep. I killed a lion and I killed a bear. And probably that was the first time his siblings, the older brothers, were hearing that their younger brother had killed a lion and had killed a bear. Hallelujah. He's given a chance and he walks into the vicinity and he's able to bring Goliath down. My brother, my sister, strength is not in the muscle. Spiritual strength is what you need and for you to get it, you will find it in the way you spend time with the Lord God. Another man who knew God was a man by the name Daniel. Daniel and the other three brethren. They are taken into Babylon. They are being taught the Babylonian uh, uh, issues so that they can get into the positions of leadership. And I believe as they entered into that place, because when you look at the Babylonian history, whatever knowledge that was being transferred was what was going to transform them into astrologers. And so they sit down and they realize that what they are being taught is the witchcraft of the Babylonian kingdom. Hallelujah. But they move, they withdraw, and they're telling this guy who is taking care of them, give us 10 days. We will not feed off the king's staff. Give us just 10 days. And within the 10 days, as they are feeding on vegetables, they are also feeding, because they were fasting, they are also feeding on spiritual meals. And at the end of the day, they emerge as wiser young men than the ones who were taught to be astrologers. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. We need people to do exploits in our families. We need people to do exploits in our workspaces. Do you know your God? Are you able to do exploits when things emerge in our lives and we are wondering what to do? Do we scamper for safety? Do we know what God is able to do? Scripture says in the book of um, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Now to him. We quote it. But do we know him 
whom we are saying is able to do. Has he ever done it to you? Has he ever done it to you? We are getting into a space. We are getting into a season when we need to see exploits in our families. We need to see exploits in every sphere of our lives. We need to see exploits. We are not going to allow challenges in our up countries, challenges. We've had enough of people saying that, you know what? Our generational patterns are like this. It is time for you to know your God and challenge those patterns once and for all. No, 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 no. It's time for you to rise above all that and you tell yourself, this one I must challenge. It cannot go on. It is ending with me. Hallelujah. It is ending with me. When the doctor calls you in the doctor's office and they tell you, you know what, first they start by asking you, was there someone in your family with one, two, three, four? And then they give you a report and they're telling you, this is the way it should be. Yes, that is the doctor's report, but you arise and by the time you are leaving that office, you look for your altar and you're going to challenge this demon of sickness and diseases. You're going to tell it, yes, that is what the doctors have said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able hallelujah I am persuaded you do not go looking for your best friend and to start narrating to them you know oh Dr. Mesema, oh ah uh, ah uh, leave your best friends alone do not allow them to meddle in this business it's a warfare you're getting into now you look for the best place where you can now create an altar and you're telling the Lord, I have known you. I have walked with you. You performed a miracle in this place. And we built an altar there. I saw you do one, two, three things. You built an altar there. And you're telling yourself and you're telling God, even this one is going to be a thing of the past. You're telling yourself as you're pacing back and forth in your house. Because that would be the best altar that you can create. You're telling yourself that you know what? The Egyptians that I'm seeing now, I shall see no more because the Lord is coming to my aid those who know their God you do not resign to fate they have sent you packing from your workplace but you are saying Lord I thank you that I had an opportunity to serve in that organization now that they have sent me packing I thank you because I know you have another place with me, with me in mind that you are already setting and I thank you because your word says that silver and gold belong to you I do not know how I will get it but I know you fed Elijah using a raven that day and so even me you will feed me and I will not go hungry whatsoever Hallelujah. It is time to arise. It is time to arise. Ask your neighbor, do you know him? <coughs> Ask the other neighbor, do you know him? The God I'm talking about is the God who parted the Red Sea. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the God who was able to raise Lazarus from the dead after Lazarus had been died for, dead four days. And my answer could decompose. That is the God I'm talking about. Hallelujah. The first time when he raised Jairus' daughter, maybe Jairus' daughter had not been taken to the morgue. So you could say she was in a coma. You know? Doctors could say we had not satisfied that she was dead. The second time he raises a dead person, this God that I'm talking about, it is the widow who already the son has died. It has been confirmed and now they are on the way to the graveside. They are going to bury and he raises that young man. But the third time he raises Lazarus who had been buried long time ago. And the doctors cannot contend with that because he has performed a miracle. Hallelujah. A miracle that no one can have an argument with. No wonder we normally sing, 
You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. There are miracles that God is willing to do and is going to do in our lives today. Miracles that people will not be willing to contend with. People will not be willing to argue with because there are people whom you've been walking with have been calling you certain names but suddenly they will discover it changed. It changed. You relocated and they did not know you relocated. Hallelujah. Do you know your God? That is the God I'm talking about. The God who could change the circumstances in Israel when there was a siege and by the following day there was food. <laughs> That's the God I'm talking about. Hallelujah. That's the God I'm talking about. The God who could open the blind man's eye. The God who was able to cleanse Naaman that day of leprosy. His hand is not too short to heal this morning. Neither his hand too short to save this morning. Hallelujah. He is the God we are talking about today. He is my God. And I want to believe he is your God. Hallelujah. He's able to transform. Those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. It's God, the other day I was asking, as I wind up, I was asking him, Lord, anytime I hear people talk about Illuminati, they keep saying that, you know what? The people in Illuminati are dead rich, filthy rich. That was actually last month, the month of August. Uyo shetani ambaye anapeana ni wewe ulimuumba, si ndio? Kaniambia eh. Hizo <laughs> pesa anapeana ni wewe uko nazo because you own them, you own everything. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 24, the earth and its fullness thereof belongs to the Lord. Kwa hivyo hizo pesa ni zako? Kaniambia eh. Why is it that people in the other kingdom are behaving like they have more than us and we are behaving miserable? Kwa nini? Kwa nasifiwe. Kwa nini? And we had a chat for a week. We had a chat for a week. And there's one thing, one thing that I got to learn during that period. Because he said, if today I used a raven, a blackbird, kukuletea chakula, utakula ama utakemea. Bwana asifiwe. Si tutaenda anza kusema shindwe. Because it's a black <laughs> a black bird. Didn't he feed Elijah using a raven? Hmm? Si he fed Elijah using a raven. Why would we imagine that all black birds belong to the devil? When did the devil create anything? I'm talking of a God who can transform our lives. And I want us to rise up on our feet. I don't know what it is that has been putting you down. <laughs> but if only you would say, today, Lord, I am walking into your environment. I'm walking into your space. And I'm not going to leave your space the rest of my life. If you could just lift your voice and tell him, Lord, here I am. I am walking right into your space. We just sang you, Yahweh, your God from the beginning to the end. Yes, just lift your voice and talk to him. He's a God who has ears. He hears when you speak to him. He's a God who is able to answer. He answers prayer. And so just lift your voice. And when you mahali, you're telling yourself, who ungwana nimekuwa nao kwa mdamrefu, I am still in struggle. I am still struggling with the things. And so today, I am not going, I am not going to relent. Lord, I am calling your name. Once uh, I, I once heard a speaker in town saying that in Africa, a point you do not not speak to the Lord God in King James Version because you want him to do things in your life. You leave the King James Version alone and begin talking in your mother tongue, a language that you understand better when things grow bad. 
And so just lift your voice and pray. And I'm just about to call the ministry team as we will be ministering to the people here today. But just pray first and foremost for yourself. Lift your voice and tell him, Father, I want to know you. Father, reveal yourself to me. Father, reveal yourself to me in the name of the Lord. Father, we want to thank you and we want to honor you today. Oh God, we pray that you'd reveal yourself to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Reveal yourself to us today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Just want to invite the ministry team. If you could just come, just come, just come and minister to the people today in the name of Jesus. The altar is open. The Lord is in this place and he's saying up till now you have not asked for anything in my name. Up till now you have not trusted you, me enough. Up till now Yes, he's willing that you just come. He's willing that you just come because he's willing to answer your prayer in the name of Jesus. He does things, wonders without number. The Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 10, wonders without number. And so if you want to connect with somebody, just come. If you feel all you need is to come and hold on the altar, maybe that is what you feel but your faith is leading you to do. You can just come and hold on the altar and tell him, Lord, here I am, here I am. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you glory. There are those of us who have been complaining, complaining, oh, the enemy has been tormenting me. The enemy has been tormenting me. This is the time to tell the enemy, you and I, we are letting go of each other. We cannot continue any longer in the name of Jesus Christ. We cannot continue any longer. Some of us have been in stagnation. We have been in stagnation and we are wondering what do we do? Yes, the ministry team members are right here and they are praying for us. They are connecting you with this altar, the altar of Calvary, because the Lord is right in this place. Or maybe you need salvation, just come. You need salvation, just come. The Lord is right here in this house this day. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Remember, they who, who, who know their God shall be strong and they shall be able to do exploits. We give you praise, Jesus. Oh, the rest of us, you can be lifting your voices in worship. Oh, I know there are parents who will come here today and just stand on behalf of their children. Stand on behalf of their children who have already started derailing. You are telling God, I know you are able. I know you are able. You are able. My Father, we worship you today. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. There are those of us who are in this congregation and the doctor told you something and you have held on to the report of the doctor today. We want you to let it go at the foot of the cross so that you can hold on to the report of the Lord. The report that says we are healed. The report that says we are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, everywhere he went, he did good. He did good everywhere he went. Uh, yes, he healed sicknesses and diseases. And this morning, he's here to heal sicknesses and diseases. You cannot afford to walk into the presence of God and go out the same. No, 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 no. No, you can transact by faith here to this morning. You can transact by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. You can transact by faith. And by the time you are leaving, you go back to the same doctor and have them check you because the Lord will have touched you. The Lord will have touched you in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we bless your name. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. You are glorious, Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus. Shila mahanda la la boze katai. Yere mahani zekai. Yara la bohundi diata. 
Robo kosha na la mahanti re re devo siri if he open the blind eyes he can heal diabetes this morning oh yes if he raised Lazarus from the dead today I know I know I know he is healer in this place yes in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father we thank you we bless your name we know that you are touching people to this morning. You are touching the organs that are ailing this morning. Lord, from your storehouse, my God, you are restoring, you are restoring, you are restoring, you are restoring people's bodies today. Every deficiency, Lord, we subject it, my God, to your power and to your authority in the name of Jesus. Every deficiency, every sickness and disease, every ailing organ today, we release it into your presence now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we release it right into your presence now. And we speak healing in this house. Healing in this house in Jesus' name. Healing in this house this morning. Oh yes, in Jesus' name, you who is able to perform miracles, we release healing in this house today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you praise. Oh, in the mighty name, in the mighty name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise.